on today's episode of Heights Chronicles. We coming to you from 176 in Broadway, the birthplace of one of the biggest trendsetters in music, the brother Dos from the legendary Fulanito. Yeah, yeah, we're going to take you through his musical journey from his days to hip house with the Billboard chart-topping group, Two in a Room, to changing the game and helping create a new wave by connecting the culture of merengue and perico ripiao with a dose of hip-hop and Spanish rap. Pun intended. So without further ado, go to YouTube, subscribe to The Heights Chronicles, Grab a bottle of your favorite whatever and toast to today's episode of Bacaneria, the Fulanito story, right here on the Heights Chronicles podcast. Keep it going and keep it growing. For promo use only, not intended for mature phonies It's for the world, all my real ones and true homies The following content I present may contain Real topics for your brain, not intended for your lane. The Chronicles, taking you to elevated heights Lights, camera, action, it's factual Factuation on facts, water and land While we travel the globe, the go to touch every soul Let's go! Listen man A lot of y'all like to use the word legend too loosely out here nowadays here at the Heights Chronicles podcast, we're going to celebrate the greatness of everyone who I get a chance to have a sit down with. Today's guest, he's not only a living legend, he's a trendsetter of the culture. If you a Latin rap artist, reggaeton artist, Latin trap, whatever, you need to bow down and pay homage to this man right here. This brother right here been a trendsetter and a game changer in this Latin hip hop since the late 80s, releasing hit gold records and charting the billboards, all while switching genres of music and creating his own lane by taking that Spanish rap to another level, adding that element of merengue and perico ripiao with a touch of house music and hip hop, like his classic smash hit, Guayando. I want everybody to show love to the legend Dos, a.k.a. Fulanito, right here on the Heist Chronicles. What's up, my brother? What up, everybody at the Heist Chronicles? What's going on? Thanks for the kind words, my brother. I appreciate that. Thank I mean, you, I want to thank everybody. Man. Thank you, man. Over the years, my 30 years doing this, I want to thank everybody who's been supporting me. Most definitely. Shout out to my home. We're gonna, we're gonna definitely, we, we're, gonna, we're gonna take a trip through those 30 years real quick, you know what I mean? Once again, thank you for coming, my brother. It's a pleasure and an honor, and an honor having you here for real. Um, first and foremost, um, I also want to thank you, you know, for blessing the people for 30 years, like you sell all over the world with, with so much great music over the years. No, I really appreciate people like dig my music to begin with. You know, when you just make stuff, you know, you never know how people are going to react to it. I just do what I what I think sounds cool, whatever the way I would like to hear it. And, you know, I'm just glad that everybody follow, followed along and joined in with the party. So, you know, I'm always going to be appreciative of that. Also got new shit coming out, too. It's going to be hot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. Now, now let's, let's take it to the top. Those, um, so you, were, you was born in the States, my brother? Yeah, I was born in New York, Spanish Harlem. Grew up okay. in the Heights. Okay, okay. And uh, what, what hospital? What hospital were you born in? Metropolitan. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 yeah. and um, so so you have been on the heights since day one. Yeah, yeah, I lived in the heights. Then I moved out to Jersey to Patterson, like right around '99, oh, and then grow, 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 grow. to Miami. Okay, okay, okay. And growing up, what block did you live on? I lived on on One Seventy Six in Broadway. Mm, okay, okay. All right, all right. And um, you was raised by both parents, my brother? Uh, by my mom's, okay. you know. But, um, you know, I always hung around with my dad, though, once I got a little older. You know, it was just like the first the first 18 years, it was mom Deuce holding it down. Peace to the queen. And, um, and um, you had um, siblings. Well, I know your brother, Edwin. Peace to Edwin. And was he your only sibling or, or you had other brothers and sisters? 
Well, I have Edwin and I have another brother named David. Okay. I have Borico brother, like I call him my Borico brother. <laughs> and then I have my sisters, Jacqueline and Daisy. Peace, peace, baby. All right, that's what's up. And so, um, what's what's the earliest recollection of what was coming out of your mom's stereo when you was young, growing up? <laughs> well, in the in the seventies, you know, my mom was rocking all that Stevie Wonder, mm. oh, yeah, Shaka Khan, and all that kind of stuff. You know, Rufus, all that. Oh, kind of, I remember just hearing that kind of shit in the house. That's then so. when it, you know, that's what was, was playing. You know, when she was like young, hanging around my friends. But then after a while. I started to hear a lot of merengue, you know, a lot of, of Fernandito, you know, Los Angeles Negros, uh, Nelson Ned, and then uh, Nelson Ned. Pony Cepeda, you know, those are my influences when it came to like merengue. That's why I ended up doing that, that pena joint from the, it was from a Pony Cepeda record. So, so, so real quick, tell me your top three merengue artists of all time. Bueno, Fernandito Villalona. Of course, the, the go, right? Yeah, Fernandito Villalona, uh, Johnny Ventura. That's right. And um, Bonnie Cepeda. Right. His record on his hell. And I know <laughs> Bonnie Cepeda came from the era, uh, from the early era of Fernandito when 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 he was coming up. Now, yeah. um, go, going back, um, um, did you go to Dubs? You went to you went to G Dubs. Yeah, yeah, I ended up graduating from G-Dubs, but I first went to r and Design for the first few years, and, you know, I was fucking up over there, so I had to, they threw me out, and I had to go to Washington, but I, I graduated from Washington, but most of my years was r and Design. Now, um, at, at what point did you fall in love with music, my brother? Like, at what age? I was in r and Design, I was about, I was about 15. You wow. know, uh, you know how art and design is a bunch of like you know artists and plus also like musicians, you know, and that's cool. So we Mar used to be Deep. Deep yeah, went yeah. to art and design. Yeah, I think it was right around the years I was there. He was probably young. They were younger, you know. But you know, like in the, in the lunch rooms, everybody beatboxing, you know, rhyming, rhyming like doing beats on the lunch table. So I did a lot of that. So I would go home. I would go home and write my rhymes, memorize it, and come back. I wasn't really too good at freestyling. So I used to just write my 16s and have them just locked in and then come into the lunchroom and just spit them every day, you know? Yeah, but I was yeah. right around the age I was 15. And then my homie that I used to hang with there and I used to go to school with a fellow Dominican, um, he had a little studio, had a re little recording studio right around Lincoln Center um, in Amsterdam Ave on 62nd. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So we used to go after school and work on, on tracks you know, work on demos. And that's when I recorded my first demo. That's ill, that's ill. So, but before we go there, tell me, uh, 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 when did you fall in love with hip hop? Like, what was it that caught your ear? <laughs> yeah, man, well, I remember, well, of course, uh, Rapper's Delight, you know, when I was like, when I was like 10 years old, I was like one of the first records I ever bought. You know, Rapper's okay. Delight and Curtis Blow came out, you know, The Breaks, that was one of my favorite records. I bought that record. Okay. But what really made me want to rap was when I heard LL Cool J. You know, like once I heard LL, I was like, I got to do that. I want to try that. You know, so I used to try to emulate him. I used to sound like him, rap like him, try to use all big words the way he used to do use big words. And I used to love his style. So I really set it off once I heard LL. And then I really got into it when I heard Rakim. Rakim was really like that's when I I'm like okay that's that's gonna be my tone I'm gonna use that tone that look that low that low voice tone and I was trying to I used to always try to sound like Rakim, so I incorporated that into like my hip house records and even my merengue records you know did it in Spanish but always thinking of like that Rakim flow you know so it was really yeah it was always LL and Rakim those were two of my favorites. Mm, so so um, you got Rakim LL and name me name me your other your other one so we can end your top three so we can know who your top three of all time is. KRS one. Chris. Okay. That's a that's that's an excellent top three, brother. He's a uh, he's a beast. I think to this day he could still take out anybody. You know, I just think because of politics, you know, you gotta make certain kind of records. But when it comes down to pure MC and MC and like hip hopping the way, you know, the way the culture is KRS. 
Bro, I went to a KRS show like four years ago and he was still killing that shit. So I know exactly who you're talking about, brother. Yeah. So going back um at the beginning, um, did you always aspire to be a solo artist? When I started out, yeah, I always aspired to be a solo artist because I was, you know, I was pretty much a loner. So my thing was always just writing my thing. I used to write my raps and come up with my own hooks, you know, and then after a while I started making my own beats. You know, so I used to do shit like that. But then eventually, you know, I started to partner up with cats. I partnered up with uh, Roger Pauletta, 179th Audubon. Yes, yes, my brother Roger Pauletta. I met Roger Pauletta, uh, um, you know, through um, my man, my, my brother, KP, the specialist. He introduced me to him when I was in the cartel back in the days. So um, Roger's old school. I know Roger was a was a producer, and um, so you both of you guys were, were learning the, the producing game at the time as well. Yeah, we used to work on, you know, we worked on hip hop when we first started uh, work working together. But then right around that time, the hip house movement was happening, you know, like house music with hip hop. And then yeah. uh, Roger hired me, say, "Yo, Aldo Marin from Cutting Records is putting together a compilation of different." producers and you know and you know they just he called me up and said you know we need one track with vocals and we want you on it so you know we worked on a track and the first joint was this record called do what you want to do so hit the floor and grab your thing do -si -do, your partner and let her know that you want her just grab a pumper and tell us something by the way that you're moving dig? Together. yes and okay we, once okay. that record took off, once that record took off in the clubs all over, you know, United States and Europe, you know, Roger and I became like a duo from that point on. And then, and, um, and, and then, that, then that duo, I'm sorry, sorry to cut you off. That duo was two in the room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. My bad. Yeah, two in the room. Two in the room. That's uh, that was a group that we we started out in. And then you know, I could do what you want. Um, we put out Wiggle It. And then that that one went gold and all that around the world and different countries and all that. So that's where everything really, really started up. Okay. Right and um, so it wasn't even like you had a, you had a demo and you were shopping your demo. It was strictly like you met um, the 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 CEO of, of Cutting Records, Aldo, and he was like, "Yo, just bring me a song, and we're gonna put you in this compilation." And and from there, your career took off, so to say. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Wow. You know, a DJ DJ Benji, Benji Candelario, he's off from the Dykeman area. Um, yes. He's the one that introduced me to Aldo, and he told me to just stop by the the, the music house. And um, just bring, just bring peace whatever. Rest in peace to David Music House, the legendary music house of David. Yeah, yeah, I miss, I miss him, man. But uh, yeah, he told me to just bring whatever demo I have because he liked my flow. He's like, you bring the best demo you have to Aldo on Saturday to the music house. And, you know, he'll let you know what he wants to do. So I played it for Aldo and right away, he signed me right away once he heard the demo. He was like, oh, it's on. And that's crazy. So you know, your story, your story is incredible. Even from from the from the beginning of your career, it's an incredible story. So so it's so it's true that cutting records, uh, were, like the corporate offices were on indictment. Yeah, yeah, they that's originally. Crazy. Yeah, it started at the music house, and then they opened up an office on Vermilion, on Vermilion two hundred four. That's and, crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah now, they, now you mentioned house music. Um. I started to enjoy a little towards like the end of the freestyle era. So yeah. I, I used to, I used to play like in hip hop jams and in parties. Um, but I remember like there, there were no lyrics attached to most house songs. It was mostly right. like a dope beat and like maybe like a repetitive word or two that, that was yeah. more than likely like the hook or the chorus of the song, which which pretty much describes your first album. Am I right? Like mostly house beats produced by you and Roger yourself. Yeah, yeah, but we had a lot of vocals because I, I always got to be running my mouth. I got to be like doing some rap, spinning some 16s and hooks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I don't get, I can't, you know, my thing wasn't to get on stage and uh, say some things and start dancing. So I always had to like fill it up with words and hooks and, and chants. So I did a lot of that. That's why I always have like hooks to every song. You know, but really, I my thing functioned because there was that that hip house movement 
when they when when house music combined hip hop with house. That's when like, artists were doing. You know, that's when even Big Daddy Kane did shit like that. He did like yeah. some hip hop type stuff. Like every like hip hop artist in those days kind of had one record doing that. Every, but I pretty much did a whole album of it. It seems like everybody tried it, but then in '88, um, the Jungle Brothers released the smash hit. I'll house you. Girl, I'll house you. Girl, I'll house you. Girl, I'll house you. You in my hut now. When you're in my hut, you know what's up. Let your mind be free. Relax your body. Jump, jump. A little higher. Jump, jump. Until you get tired. House your body. House your body. House your body. Well, yeah, that was, that was the one that inspired me, really, like, you know, because I really didn't know how to attack this hip house thing, because I really didn't like a lot of the records I heard until I heard Girl, I House. When I heard that, I was like, oh, yeah, that's it. That's how you do it. So, you know, so, so, so you say, uh, so you're saying that um, that, that was the beginning of house rap for the most part? Um, the good one, because there, there was other cats that did some stuff, but they were really corny. And I really was like, ah, oh, I can't get into that shit. But when I heard um, Girl, I House You, I said, okay, these guys did it right. You know, Todd Terry on the beat, especially. And, you know, Jungle Brothers were always badass. So that was a great combination. Facts, facts. Peace to the Jungle Brothers. Peace to Sammy B, who lives out here in Georgia as well. Um, so so um, you guys were two in the room. Did you have beef with two without hats? <laughs> nah. <laughs> you know, nah, you, you knew them all. cats? You knew them nah, cats then? Yeah, no, we hit it off right away. We all be we still friends to this day. You oh, know, that's what's um, up. That's what's you know, up. Rest in peace, Danny Vargas, he passed away um last yes. year. Yes, you rest know, the peace of Danny Vargas. That's right. As I was, you know, doing my, my, my studies for this interview, I ran I ran into that. Um so then then in the 1989, um, y'all released your debut album called The Album. Right, that's the, the compilation album that, that Cutting put together. So oh, even okay, okay. before I was in Two in a Room, the name Two in a Room was uh, was created by Aldo Marin at Cutting Records. So he put gotcha. together a lot of different like producers, like Todd Terry, Little Louis Vega. Everybody had a track. The legend you know? Louis Vega. He's to Louis Vega. Yeah, yeah, he's, he rocked. Yeah. George, so, Morell, so. George Morell did an instrumental called As It Grooves that's on that, on that album, which is an instrumental as well. Yes. And um, Aldo called me up and said, hey, do uh, do some vocals to that and let's remix it. And that's when it became Wiggle It. The track kind of like transformed into Wiggle It. So from that, from that album, that's when that led to the next record deal and all the big shit, you know? But on okay. that album that we're talking about specifically, there was only one track with vocals and that's the do, do what you want. Okay, so that's what. Okay, so when I asked you that before about you know not having too many lyrics to it, that's what I was implying about. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. track is going to win with, with with bars. Got it. <laughs> Got it. So then, in 1990, you released Wiggly. title track Wiggle It was not only a smash hit in the States, but it was an international hit as well, booming gold, reaching number one on the billboard. Looking back yeah. at that, my brother, how was the feeling knowing that you made it, you arrived, you had a smash hit in a, in a, in a genre of music that was still like a brand, brand new genre for the most part? You know, when you're young, you know, when you're young and, you know, when you get signed right away and every record you, you put out, like ends up charting and all that, you start, you know, you, you feel gassed. I was gassed start up. Start feeling yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like As yes. you should. It went, it went gold, but of course. <laughs> but you know, you know, it's just when you're young, you got crazy and shit, you know, like now I, I think back and I'm like, damn, those calm down, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> but you know, it was good, Not it man. was good time. It was good time just seeing everybody across the board in middle America, you know, like, like uh, like my manager used to, used to call us. He's like, well, you know what you guys are now? You guys are dudes. You guys are dudes because you're playing like on Z100 and you're playing like in middle America, Tennessee, you know, wherever. Wow. There's like white people. That shit was banging. Wow. 
the videos on rotation. We were, feeling, we were feeling really good, and we was we started traveling all over the country, like just doing touring all over the country, and then we started going all over the world. So it was really a great time, you know, during during the whole Wiggle situation. And money, a lot of oh, money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, publishing deals, shit that don't exist. Well, it exists now, but it's not like back in the days, you know. Back in the days, it was fun. Before you even finished the record, you got you got this huge advance for the record, then a huge advance for the publishing. So it was a lot more fun in them days. But, um, you know, yeah, it was great. It was a great time, life-changing. You know, I, I was going to go to college and be an architect. But once, once Wiggler hit off, you know, I just, this is what I stayed doing, you know. I stay touring and, and performing. That's my first love. Today's episode of Heights Chronicles is brought to you by Up Top Apparel. Represent Up Top with all the latest flavors from Up Top Apparel. Follow Up Top Apparel on all social media platforms at uptop.apparel or go to the website uptopapparelny.com. Tell them Heights Chronicles sent you. You heard? And now all of a sudden, you have, like you mentioned before, Big Daddy Kane, you got like Rob Bass making records, like get on the dance floor. And C and C music factories of the world making his songs with this formula, even heavy beat. Um, you know where now that we found love. Yeah, um, yeah. You, you. So you pretty much was the father to that sound, my bro. Uh, a, a, a genre that was labeled like hip hop, hip house, for the most part. Would you take you credit know, for I, that? Well, I would say I'm just. I was like one of the guys. There was a lot of a lot one of us doing simultaneously. You know, because they had some cats out in Chicago doing it. You know, but I, I, you could say I came from more of like the the New York from the freestyle side that then became like house. You know, because then there was a hip house dudes that came from the hip hop side, straight up like Daddy Kane and and Heavy right. D. Everybody you know, but I came, do it. yeah, I came more from like that freestyle sound in New York, and then morphed yeah. into like house. You know? Um, so. Your third album, World Party, it, it was released in 1995. With the success of Wiggly, why was there such a gap from like Wiggly to the World Party album? Um, explain that to the people because labels usually want to follow up immediately, especially like after having success. Was that the case or? Well, we, we the touring we were just non-stop touring after wiggle it and we would just tour the world and leave leave the house for like two months come home for about a like a week or two and then leave again for another two months and that went on for like about three years and um we just never really had time to get back in the studio it was wow. just touring and you know coming back and being with family and then heading out again so that lasted for like about three years and then then eventually we recorded um, El Trago in 1994. Give me a token, I wanna get open. Pour me a Coke and rum and then some. I ain't joking, I need to get open. So I'ma need more than just one. El Trago in 1994 yes. with Victor Vargas and Danny Vargas with yes. the Weber Man. And then that kind of like set it off for me again. Like that was like my next hit, you know. No, I no, yeah, there was, you actually had like a couple of hits um, in, in between um, both albums, but but it, I'm just saying, like uh, you know, sometimes these labels, especially like a small label, like cutting cutting records, uh, I, I'm surprised that they weren't like, yo, we need the next one, we need the next one, you know what I'm saying? Oh well, yeah, they wanted, they they would have wanted another album, you know. Okay. It's just, yeah, yeah, they were kind of like, hey, it's time to get another album ready, but we were just touring and acting crazy, you know, we're wilding out. <laughs> <laughs> the crew and the fellas, we were just constantly, you know, those are the things that I would take back. You know, the work ethic wasn't there, like the way we picked it up later on. But when yeah. our first project, we were just like cocky and, you know, it's ready when it's ready. We're ready when we're ready, you know, that kind of shit. But, um, yeah, yeah. Because well, we were World Party, you had Ahora E, that's a, that's a classic as well. You had Un Trago, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and, but during this time as well, the 740 boys were created. Yeah. Yeah, like right 
simultaneously while uh, the Tuna Room project was happening, you know, we started dabbling with Miami bass. You like that mm. Miami bass sound? <clears throat> yeah. And I was like, then I started to emulate like uh, Luke. I always could do like that, that yelling. I would always just do that fucking around. But then when it came, it came to a, a point that my boy um, Winston was like, yo, let's record um, let's record a Miami bass and you know, let's see if you can incorporate that voice, that Luke voice. And that's what we did. We came up with this tune called Shimmy Shake. And it was a Miami bass record. Uh, we try to like infiltrate the the Miami scene and they weren't having it. They were like, you New York niggas trying to copy us, you niggas making fun. No. And they didn't give us no kind, no kind of light. Cause they thought we were like, like, like making fun of them. That's crazy. Like, you New York niggas don't like our shit. Why are you trying to copy us? <laughs> and I was like, oh, all right, all right. But the thing is, Aldo, Aldo released the 12 inch with the acapella on it, with just my vocals on it. And an Italian DJ named Constantino Padovano snatched the, the acapella and made his own track to it. And he added, he made it like a hip house. He put house music, like a house track. And then that shit blew up. That shit went gold in France and, and Germany and England, you know? But, it, you know, it started out as a bass record, but it ended up being a hip house record. That's crazy, yeah. brother. So we had a lot of success with that, you know? And that's when we uh, then completed that 740 Boys album. And that's when Gordito Pickles joined the group. Like, we was always hanging with, he was always hanging around with us. I don't know if you know Pickles. Yes, sir, he was of always, course. Yeah, yeah, he was always hanging with us, but right around the 740 boys, I, I put him in the group because he could imitate that that Luke voice. Well, close mm. enough. I, you know, <laughs> I, I do it, but then I say, hey, can you uh, see how far, how close you can get it? So I was yeah. like, yeah, close enough. And I put him in the group. So wow. that's when we, that's when we started like working together. So so we're going to move forward to that. So then 1997, Fulanito, um, what made you say, we're going to get these guys together and create this other lane right here. What, like, what, what is the temperature in the industry? And, and, uh, and did you say, like, this hip house thing is not popping anymore? Let's, let's do this. Yeah, we were, we were always on tour. And eventually, we would run into, like, let's say, Proyecto Uno. We would run into Proyecto Uno and the Ilegales just in, the, in our travel. And, you know, I, I found out the kind of money they were making doing Latin music, doing merengue fusion with hip hop that I started to think, I'm like, man, maybe I could do this. If I could brush up on my Spanish, brush up on my Spanish, and, uh, you know, let's try one. Let's try a, a, a metting house type joint. So it's just right. so happened that my partner Winston's father, Arsenio de la Rosa, he's an accordion player. A, a, a superstar accordion player from the Dominican Republic. And by the way, um, I was married to his daughter too. So my partner, my partner musically was Winston Rosa, but then I was also married to his sister. So it was like a family thing. And um, Arsenio was an accordion player doing Perico Ripiao. And I said, well, if I'm going to do Merengue House, I would love to do something different and not what everybody else is doing. Like, you know, like Proyecto Una Ilegales, Sandy Papo, because theirs were, they were pretty similar. Their sound was very similar amongst the three. Rest in peace. Do... Rest in peace, Sandy and Papo. Rest yeah, in peace yeah. to those brothers as well. Rest in peace, man. Good guys, man. I'm going to miss them. I'm going to miss Sandy. I was close with them. Wow. Know, but... But we felt we wanted to do our merengue house different, you know, because why do the same shit everybody else is doing? And it was just a perfect storm having Arsenio de la Rosa handy to try Perico Ripiao rap. We call it Perico Rapiao. So yeah. he just reluctantly recorded the track because he was like, oh, what you guys doing? I'm not interested, but all right, whatever. <laughs> so he recorded his accordion and we took it, just added a beat, you know, added some house and hip hop elements. And that's when we came out with Guayando. Guayando. Y ahora que la cosa se va a poner buena aquí. Posadera total. Adelante. Hagan puya, que hay party, move your body. Everybody, mi gente mía, latino el mundo, en alegría. Vamos juntos a la montaña de mi patria dominicana, el acordeón. Tocando fuerte y este es cierto. Yo quiero verte chocando cuerpo, mojando la ropa. Moviendo la cosa maravillosa Con mucho swing, gelatín Calientita con el 
First try. That was pretty. That was pretty cool. Now, brother, listen, man. I mean, cause prior to Fulanito, the, the only artist that I heard rapping over merengue, and, and, and it was like Biko C. You know, when he did the Yo Siete one shit, un hombre busca una mujer, and mm. and then and then like um uh, um, but yo, but we gotta give respect. Me, I'm talking about like 1984 to the legend Eddie Herrera because he <laughs> yeah. was the he was the first one to spit those two verses and and we be the white as classic and the dinero. You know what I'm saying? Yo, he killed that shit, bro. And that was early. That was early, those. That was early, my brother. No, that was some that was some pioneer type shit. Some pioneer type shit, B. Like people, people, you know, he he's he's incredible with his voice and, and everything else, but people forget, you know what I'm saying, that he, he was spitting the he was spitting that fire early, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, amazing. Every once in a while, just I, I, I just like tune in and watch the video of him like doing the show. I'm like, wow, they were really. You know, you know like, Eddie Herrera. Yeah, yeah, we've done some gigs together and everything, so I meet up with him every once did, in a while. You remind him of that? You be like, yo, yeah. <laughs> had to. <laughs> that's dope. That's dope. To. It was like one of those. I'm like, you know, I gotta like, I had to say it, you know. So I, I gave him props for it and thanks for like, you know, setting it off. That's dope. That's dope. So you know, we we mentioned we mentioned um Magic Juan, you know, with his hair, El Tiburon, and groups like Sandy and Papu, you know, the, you guys were. Uh, along with Fulanito, you guys are really the trendsetters of this merengue rap or perico rapia or, or whatever, you know, whatever the trend. Yeah, when I heard Magic doing his thing, I was like, oh, that's 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 type hot right there. And I was like, you Magic know, I gotta, is incredible, I, man. I, gotta I mean, get I, I heard him spit like bars, like we with, with songs like with the beat nuts. And the, is there music of you like spitting over hardcore rap beats and shit like that, those? Um, like out there, there's probably some stuff because I've done so many like features I even forgot about. There's things that I've done. I've, I've done some stuff with magic, some hip hop. I would love shit. to hear that shit, you know. I would love yeah, to just yeah. just put in bars in English, like Spanglish or just in, in raw English. It's like Spanglish. Spanglish. Yeah, I would love yeah. to hear that shit. Be I'm gonna definitely dig in the archives for some shit, man. Word, yeah, bro. yeah. There's a few things out there lingering. Now, um, um, listen, man. Your, your, like I said, your, your career from you know from the beginning, like you know, what I'm saying to, to this point where 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 you about where, where you released the 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 Fulanito album, um, success must have felt even better for you after switching lanes and and going like a, another direction in your career, because you you still came out on top even even. Even if it was, um, you know, just like you said, messing around and trying it to see if it works, and the shit came out hot and it popped off. So, uh, um, like, bro, to me that's like a milestone because I think I can't think of like um, too many artists who successfully jump from like one genre to the other and was successful and everything, you know, in all chapters of, of their career, bro. Like very few. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. But I, you know, I gotta give thanks to Aldo Marin and Amaro Marin for uh, giving me a chance to do whatever I wanted to do. You know, I was signed to them, but you know, whatever I brought to the table, they gave me the support, you know, and um, helped me mix it, you know, get the sound right and put it out and they promoted it, you know, they, they always stood behind everything I did. So I always give them a lot of props. Yeah, that's dope, my brother. Now listen, man, um, and I know, you know what I'm saying? I, I want to thank you once again for your time. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I know that that you you're on a you're on a busy schedule. So um as we wind down this incredible episode with the one and only Dose, aka Fulanito, um, you release five more albums after your debut, countless hit records. So it was six it was six total albums and 
Fulanito. It's, 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 it's about six. It's a cl- counting a remix album as well. It's about six. Wow. Incredible, man. Now, um, recently, um, you dropped a single in 2020 called Brilla. Yeah, yeah. Well, what that I just... That was, yeah, that yeah. Was... I'm, really feel, I'm really feeling that style. It reminds me a lot of, you know, like the hip house style, just doing doing some some rapping over some house type beats. They call it guaracha now, but you know, it's like guaracha hip hop. Bro, know? how so many genres, how many genres, how many genres of music you trying to do, my brother? You like a master of everything, <laughs> my brother. The owl, look. Country, country <laughs> gonna be nuts. <laughs> nah. Bro, you be the only one that can pull that off, bro. I, I, I promise you that shit, man. And then on um, this- I wanna dabble, I wanna dabble on some, um, you know, some dembo and shit. I, like some of the new shit I'm doing, a little a little dembo, but kind of like mixed with merengue, like a fusion type thing that, I, that I'm up to these days. So you'll be hearing that pretty soon. I can't fucking wait to, to hear what you, what you, what you're gonna release soon. And then this year um, you released a single with Cali Mete called Sueltala, the remix. Oh yeah, yeah, he hollered at me, you know, it's a single he put out. And then he just called, you know, he called me up, said, yo, just drop a verse on it and we'll do a little special remix. And we did a little That's video up. for it. So that was always cool. Yeah, Calimete always looked out for me. He was a cool cat. That's what's up, brother. So besides, um, you know, you trying to get into them both, um, what else do we um, expect from from the kid Dose, um, AKA Fulanito? Um, well, like I said, some Dembo, maybe a little bit of trap, like fusion as well. Yeah, but do that shit, bro. Uh, but I'm definitely gonna drop uh, a couple of Perico Rapiaos. I gotta have, gonna have about three of them on the album at least. So, 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 al- so there's an album coming out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm putting it together. I'll please let you go. know as soon as it's done and shit. Yes, please, brother, please. Um, um, uh, now, um, did you ever dabble mm-hmm. to other things like acting and uh, 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 things like that? Be- being that you're um, a master yeah. of every craft. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I as far as I've gone, I was supposed. What was it? I I went and audition for the Michael Jackson movie, the Jacksons movie. Oh wow! Um, I made it. To, I made it to the to the second callback. So like, I was beat out by somebody, but I I tried, but I never really did anything else after that. Okay, okay. So um, who knows? I would I would have been picked for that. Who knows what would have happened from then on? But, <laughs> but yeah. I came close. Uh, that's what's up, brother. That's what's up. Now, talking about um, acting in movies, what did you think about In the Heights? Um, before you answer, me personally, I love this, so be careful with your response, my bro. Go ahead. Well, I, haven't, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, you know, okay. You know, but being that you love it, because I'm pretty sure if you love it, I'm like, it must be good then. You know, because I, I you know, a lot of cats I know that I say, yo, that shit's off the hook. Dudes yeah. that I thought would say it's corny or it's whack. Everybody's like, nah, that shit's good. It's actually that good. good. That shit is good. There's a lot of there's a lot of controversy going on with it right now, as you may know. You know, yeah. a lot of a lot of a lot of hating, you know what I'm saying? But we we never pay attention to we never pay attention to that anyway. I can't wait till yeah, you watch. I, I think you I heard some people complaining there was no merengue in it. <laughs> I was like, really? They were expecting merengue? Because it's in the heights. And I'm like, well. People are expecting people, bro. People, there's a lot of things that people are expecting from, you know what I mean? From from that flick, but um, you know what I'm saying, uh, my bro. Um, yeah. tell tell everybody your social media, where we can see you perform live now that the world is reopening again. Well, you can find me on Instagram, Fulanito Original. You know, on uh, on Facebook, Rafael Dos Vargas. I really just have my personal one active, so you could like just follow me there as well. Oh. You know, and you know, you can catch me at my gigs. I'm gonna be in Colorado next week. You know, oh. I got three gigs out in Colorado. Then I come back to uh, Miami. I got a, a gig on July 2nd for the people out of Miami. Look me up there. Just look at my site. I, you get all the information. Then I got to go to Iowa the week after that, you know, and uh, San Francisco, Seattle, Portland, all in, in July. You know, I don't have the dates exact. But it's like all the 15th, July 15th, 16th, 17th round. This is getting pretty busy. Thank That's God, man. It was, it was really, it was really slow last year, obviously, and it was, you know, it was getting to me. But I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad to be back out there again. Damn legend, man. Well, 
Shit, man, just make sure y'all check out my brother, Dose, aka Fulanito. By the way, Rafael Vargas is my dad's name as well. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know what I mean? Just legendary shit. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for allowing me you know, your time off your busy schedule. You know, um, um, this was um, another Heights Chronicles classic, and my platform won't be anything if I never had, you know, real Washington Heights guests, you know, real, real Washington Heights legends like yourself, my brother. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, uh, you know, thank you. Thank you once again. You know, the Kid Dose, a.k.a. Fulanito, um, for all my viewers all over the world. Thank you for watching. Um, this is your boy, Noah, signing out. Washington Heights, we did it. Another classic, baby. Heights Chronicles. Keep it going and keep it growing. The Heights Chronicles, Heights Chronicles. What's the topic of the day? We live to debate. The Heights Chronicles, Heights Chronicles. Let's talk about it. Have a seat. Let's talk about it. The Heights Chronicles, Heights Chronicles. What's the topic of the day? We live to debate. The Heights Chronicles, Heights Chronicles. Let's talk about it. Have a seat. Let's talk about it. Listen.